process of taping up a uh, vertical flange, which is on a horizontal run, for pouring the hot wax. It's a 12-inch flange, and they're running a NASA duct tape, a 357 tape around the flange, single rep with an overlap at the top. Okay, after the uh, flange is uh, sealed, we have the uh, flange taped up. At this time, we're going to cut a slot in the top of the tape to uh, pour our wax uh, through. Okay, th these uh, tape rolls are made from the Trenton wax uh, tape. We cut strips out about eight inches long, about two inches wide, and roll it, and then roll it around. Now we're going to roll a piece of the uh, Trenton uh, tape, wax tape, around the uh, opening, and this will be used as a sort of funnel to pull the wax through. Okay, we're going to show you here, we have a wax uh, mallet, we started this earlier. We have a pot of wax mallet. We use our hot gloves, being real careful, come over and pour into our carrying bucket. We have a smaller bucket here, it's a stainless bucket for carrying the wax. We just gently lean it over and pour. And this is where you could get in trouble if you make a splash. You want to be real careful. You may want to even wear a mono to do this. Pour our carrying bucket full. Gently set the pot back on the burner. Okay, we're in the procedure now of pouring the actual wax into the flange. Those pouring direct from our bucket has a little indention in it left there to make it pour easy. So this is a 12 inch flange and it's always good maybe to put something to under the flange in case you have a leak to catch the wax. All the spillage that you can eliminate eliminates that much cleanup afterwards. This 12 inch flange is going to take about uh, six or seven pounds of wax. About a three quarter inch gap in between the flange faces. You can see the level of the wax, and this is where it's real important. Still topping it off there? Just topping it off. It looks like it's just about full. Sometimes the wind will give us a hard time using that big bucket. If it does, then we have a smaller, about a gallon bucket with a funnel spout on it, and this works real good. Pouring in from pouring that. into the flanges. Gotcha. We're in two with the pouring of the tape, of the, uh, the wax. The uh, wax has had about 20 minutes to set up. We take a knife and strip the tape on top. Make sure that the wax is set up, which it is. We can go ahead and just slowly pull the tape off, strip it on around. You put a little wax uh, coil off the top, save it. If you have a little residue left at the top, take a knife, shave it off smooth, and uh, give it a little better finish. We have a little plastic stick with a radius on it, just about anything, and just drag that right through the top uh, where you cut the wax off, leave it a smooth finish. It, uh, doesn't leave any cracks. And the flange is complete, ready to go. Put the uh, slot or hole in the tape, and we're using a cup, or we call it. It's just a piece of PVC pipe, two-inch pipe that's been cut and split. And we're using that we're, after we tape up the flange. We'll tape this cup over the uh, hole in the tape, tape it on, and. Seal up the bottom with some tape, and we use this for our pouring funnel. 
This will allow the wax to run in through the flange and into the bolts, especially the bottom flange. To uh, eliminate the air pockets, we punch little slits around the tape about three places on the circumference. And this allows the air to vent out and the flange to completely fill. Okay, when you fill up that cup, do you uh, do you fill it all the way up to the top or just to the level of the flange gap seam we there? We fill it all the way to the top. Uh -huh. This adds that extra little uh, static pressure Okay. To make the flange fill up good. But this time, uh, Joe is going through the procedure of wrapping the flange. Like I say, it's about the same as we did on the uh, vertical flange. Makes a little overlap in the tape. Yeah. Make sure it's sealed all around. He's going to cut a slot in the tape so that we can get wax into the flange. This, we started off by pulling a bolt out and pulling through a bolt hole, but this eliminates a lot of work. We took about six or eight inch uh, strip of tape, duct tape, put it around the uh, cup, and tape it right up to the flange. We use about three strips of tape on this to make sure it's sealed at the bottom. Press the tape in real good, seal it, and there you have a quick funnel. All right. Now Joe's going around with a knife and cut a little slit in the tape next to the top flange. This will act as a vent. Now these little slits will uh, bleed. If it's good, if they start bleeding wax, that shows that you got it full. Okay, we're going to show you here, we have a wax uh, mallet. We started this earlier. We have a pot of wax mallet. We use our hot gloves, being real careful. Come over and pour into our carrying bucket. We have a smaller bucket here, it's a stainless bucket for carrying the wax. We just gently lean it over and pour. And this is where you could get in trouble if you make a splash. You want to be real careful. You may want to even wear monogloves to do this. Now we're in the process of uh, filling this horizontal flange. We have a little wind blowing today. Joe's using a different can. This is the uh, funnel can. It's really actually an oil filler can with hot wax in it. It works real good. It eliminates the separate can in the funnel. It eliminates the problem of wind blowing your wax around. Always remember your safety. Use gloves. Sometimes if you've got lots of wind, you may want to use monogoggles. Some places require monogoggles for doing this type of work. The flange is filling up slowly. We should get a little... Mm -hmm. We're getting a little mm -hmm. wax dripping on the back side from a vent. This means that the flange is filling up good. Have cooled off our wax in this horizontal flange. We come up with a sharp knife and, and uh, start pulling the tape back. And you may have to split it. Take a knife and split the tape, land against the flange, and start pulling it back. You get a hold of it, then you can just take it, pull it on around. It leaves a good finish on there. You work it right, your cup comes off with it, you have a little wax residue that you save and use that for in a remelt. It doesn't hurt to remelt this wax, use it again. Save your little plastic cup, it's just a piece of PVC. Save that. You have a little wax hanging out where the cup was, take a sharp knife, slice it off. Any little residue on there, slice it off. Don't damage the paint. You make scratches in the paint to the metal and you have corrosion and get started. If you need to, you can take a little plastic or wood stick with a little radius on it, drag it through the shave off the wax, and it's complete. Check it for cracks, any voids. Sometimes the uh, wax doesn't fill up completely to the top flange, and uh, either if it's enough gap there you need to re-pour or try to work it up to the top with this uh, piece of plastic stick and that leaves it complete.